Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, March 10th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Riley Gilbert. And we're here with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And her jazz hands as yes, usual. Yes, of course. <laughs> we have an exciting guest today. Yeah, Ryan, who is with us? We have Crystal Joy Brown of Woo! Hamilton with us today. Very exciting. She plays Eliza, and yes. we will talk to her shortly. But first, today's top news. A Broadway play is heading to the West Coast, among other things. <laughs> yes. Uh, Los Angeles has announced its 2020-2021 season. Ooh, that's a lot of that's a lot. A lot of 20s in there. <laughs> um, and the, uh, Matthew Lopez is The Inheritance, the Olivia Award winning drama. Uh, it is going to make its West Coast premiere. That will happen um, at the Geffen Playhouse in Los Angeles. Um, it will uh, play January 12th through March 14th of 2021. A director for that production will be announced at a later date. Also, Brian Cranston, who you may know from his Tony-winning roles in Network and all the way on Broadway, as among as well as Breaking Bad, yeah, a little show you people may, may have heard of, <laughs> uh, he will make his directorial debut at the Geffen, uh, but with the production yet to be announced. So we don't know what he's but doing. Not the with, inheritance. But not, not the, the inheritance. inheritance. Clear, yeah. But we don't know it yet. So um, <laughs> other ex exciting things happening for that season: the world premiere musical *A Wicked Soul* in Cherry Hill, and world premiere plays *Soft Target* and *Mind Play* will all be happening as well, uh, as well as the West Coast debut of *The Engagement Party*. Uh, casting an additional creative team for the Geffen's new season will be announced at a later date. Uh, but really exciting stuff happening in the West Coast. I guess we should share. That seems nice. We can Good yeah. stuff. Well, well Why done. not? <laughs> yes, and we're finding out a little bit about Classic Sage's upcoming season, and it is very good. It is very good. It, it is very, very good. good. Very good. Stamp of approval. Hey, John Doyle, you can use that <laughs> yeah. in the front of house down at Classic Stage Company on very 13th good. Street. Of course, John Doyle is the Tony winning artistic director of that off Broadway theater company. And among the new lineup, we have a new staging of A Midsummer Night's Dream Ooh. and The Island. That's the Athel Fugard uh, production. Yes. And the play Kiss of the Spider Woman. So, not. The Candor and a Musical, yes. but that would be amazing as well. Yeah. It's based on the Manuel Puig book. And it mm -hmm. has a new translation by Ellen Baker. Also, mm -hmm. we will have Doyle's creation, Ten Cents a Dance. And of course, this season, which has been dark, dark, dark. It, it has. We had the yes. Scottish play. We're not in the theater, yeah. but I'm just going to keep it like no, that. Yeah. Yeah. We had Frankenstein and Dracula. Yeah. And now coming up, we have Assassins. That's yeah. this death. season. Lots of death. A lot of death. <laughs> yeah. He's lightened up with Midsummer Night's <laughs> 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 So look for that next season. Mm -hmm. And we got some exciting news happening across the pond. Yes, full casting has been announced for Jack Absolute Flies Again, which is a new comedy by the Olivier-nominated playwright Richard Bean, uh, who you might know from One Man, Two Governors, or The Nap that happened here on Broadway. Uh, London's National Theatre will host the show April 15th through July 25th. Uh, Thea Chirac will direct the production. And Olivier nominee Richard Fleischman will be leading the cast alongside Laurie Davidson, Natalie Simpson, and C Caroline Quentin, and more. Um, it is set in July of 1940. Jack Absolute Flies Again takes place after pilot officer Jack Absolute. You probably could have guessed that. <laughs> he flies home. Back on British soil, Jack is shocked to find his old flame Lydia on the base. Setting his sights on winning her heart, Jack's advances turn to anarchy when the young <gasps> heiress demands to be loved on her own terms. Well, there I'm we go. That. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so um, this will be happening uh, in London. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we got another Broadway baby. Yay. Oh, you know what? Everybody needs some good news today. Yes. So we have some for you. Tony winner Steve Kazee and his fiance Jenna Dewan have welcomed their son. Aww. Yay. Adorbs. He was born on March 6th, and his name is Callum Michael Rebel. I love that name, Callum Michael Rebel. It's got a lot to live yeah. up to with okay. the three names. <laughs> yeah. Of course, uh, Steve Kazee won the Tony Award when he was the star of Once in 2012, and has also been in What in 10 in the Shades, Bam -a -lot, Seascape, and To Be or Not to Be, and Jenna yes. Dewan. <gasps> I well, you know who she one. is. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have some other exciting things on the site today. We do. Uh, Sister Act is happening at Paper Mill Playhouse, and we have uh, Nicole Vanessa Ortiz performing Fabulous Baby in a Club Broadway.com video. 
Um, also, episode two of Back in the Sky with Rachel Tucker. Backstage at Come From Away, you can watch that right now. Rehearsal clips of Love Life happening at New York City Center and rehearsal clips of Dun 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 Riverdance. Don't Caitlin Moynihan. <laughs> one of them <laughs> has Kate Baldwin and Brian Stokes uh, Mitchell. Yes, and the right. other one has some Irish step dancing. They're really yeah, different. Major not lovers. Michael Claire. Flatley, though. Oh, he's not well, in you know, it. You don't have to be a bummer all, about it. No, I'm, no, I just want to <laughs> let the people know he's yes. not in it. Um, but that's well, it. That's it go. for me. Thank you. I'm gonna Brian. go wash my hands again. <laughs> yes, we're gonna that's keep what doing that. Do. Yeah, it's a good thing to do. Caitlin, please introduce our guest. Yes, gladly, guys. We got Crystal Joy Brown here with us today, cause guys, she is in Hamilton on the Broadway as Eliza. Wow. She recently appeared on Broadway in Big Fish. Motown, Leap of Faith, she has done a whole lot of stuff. You guys can follow her on social media at Crystal Joy Brown. Leave all of your questions down in the comments below. And please welcome Crystal and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much Joy for Brown. I would hug you, but I we're not gonna, we're not gonna touch. An elbow bump? We're definitely not touching. Elbow bump? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how we do on the Broadway. We're like, I gotta keep healthy because you're in the biggest blockbuster. <sighs> Of all time. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, no, it's it's always been on my radar as a show that when I saw it in 2016, I was completely blown away. I was like, whoa. I didn't even know that this is what theater could be. Mm -hmm. You know, like I didn't even know that I could have such a beautiful experience like this. I mean, I, I got into theater because I was moved by rent. And seeing that diversity and seeing the diverse storytelling, I was like, whoa, I've never seen this. I grew up watching a lot of, you know, Oklahoma and, mm -hmm. and a lot of stories that didn't exactly show me. Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to see Rent and being able to see, like, different... You didn't just see Rent. Yes, I did. Well, you I made didn't a beeline just... for Rent. Yes, yes. I did. So that we'll was my... That. We'll yes. get to that. So I, I loved Rent so, so much, and it got me thinking that musical theater was a place that I too could be a person of color, like I too could tell a story and a story that was so nuanced and full of love and hope and redemption and friendships. And then in the city that I was obsessed with, I was like, <laughs> wait a second, this is New York, New York, New York. And I want to be in New York, New York, New York. All of them. So, and then this is kind of, um, this show, like seeing Hamilton kind of reinvigorated so many things in me, kind of the way that Rent did when I was a kid and saw it. Um, it made me, it's it's oddly enough, made me more patriotic again. Really? Because you grew up in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's kind of close to our nation's capital. Yeah. Texas and Virginia are the two most patriotic states. Tell me more. What does that yeah. mean? How, well, what, how does that manifest itself when you were a child? So I grew up 10 minutes outside of D.C. Mm -hmm. and my whole family's government and we grew up I mean, of course, we did the Pledge of Allegiance every single day and we sang like proud to be an American every single week. And it was just a very, like it was intense. Um, but we were very, very proud to be Americans. And also they didn't hide and shy around the history of America. I grew up literally on uh, George Washington's land. It's oh. called Hayfield Farms. And I grew up on that. Mm. And um, and we would always take tours and and figure out and see the creation of the beginning of the colonies and slavery. And it was a big part of my growing up that we all kind of immersed ourselves in that I thought the rest of the country was doing as well. Like I kind of thought oh, we yeah. were like really yeah, talking about right. racism and really talking about these things. And, and we weren't. When I moved, I went to high school in Los Angeles. So I went from Fairfax County, Virginia, um, and then went to high school in Los Angeles. And I was like, whoa, the cultural dif disconnect. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then also the- You weren't singing every week anymore. No, I don't even know if they knew the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, LA Unified, but you got work to do. Um, no, but it was just such a different experience. And, um, and not having that, I, thought, I think that, you know, you kind of lose a sense of, like, pride and, and trying to, like, even when it's just, like, keeping a place clean, keeping a place um, uh, really, like, engaging with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. and, and that was something that after, like, the 2016 election and all these different things that happened and bubbled up and... The Me Too movement, I just started to be like, well, I felt displaced, you know? Oh, yeah. And this show, I saw it, and I was sitting there, and I was looking at all of these, this, when they, the first thing that they really do, the timeline, and I see all of these bodies, and I see different shapes, sizes, colors, like, heights. It's just, like, this beautiful swath of what America actually is. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I mean, I immediately, like, welled up with tears. And I immediately was like, wow, that is a powerful statement. And then within it, just listening to, like, to, to Lynn create the story of, of pride 
you know, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a mm-hmm. really like prideful um, story of 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 the ability to dream in this country and to really push yourself and excel. And and at a time that I was kind of like, I'm really looking into Canada. Um, <laughs> you weren't feeling it. You weren't feeling I, it. Yeah, yes. I was like, I don't know where to go. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know where I really belong. And um, and then this show, and also like I'd taken some time off Broadway too, and I was like, I don't really know like where my heart is. And then for this to be the thing that brought me back and then has brought me back as like excited about my activism, excited about um, doing art that really inspires people to do more research and also to feel pride again. Mm -hmm. I watch audiences tell me every single day that that they're amazed to see this diversity, you know, white people, black people, Latino, anyone that I get to talk to, they're just like, I was amazed to see all of this. And it was just beautiful representation. Yeah. And it shows you how much representation matters because it literally is changing lives. And I watch people's minds change and people's hearts open. And I couldn't ask to be a part of something like better for my soul. And then to be able to like, you know, give that to other people. It's it's innumerable joy. It sounds like it brought <laughs> you back to yourself. It did. You know, in, in a lot of ways it did. And a lot of things that I was doing like um, – that I, I started to really focus on like the kind of art that I want to be a part of. Because the kind you're of, also a writer. You yeah. have so many talents. Yeah, I love to write. It's not I, just a singer, actor, dancer. No, you <laughs> at all. Yeah, I consider myself more of a storyteller than I consider myself a actor or I will say like an artist too. Um, but I think any way that I can tell a story, whether it's writing a song or voicing a cartoon or uh, directing a short film or what, however I can tell the story, I get really excited because I think that like human connection is so beautiful and we're all experiencing this thing and we're trying to figure out what we're doing like why are we doing what we do and I always tell like whenever I do workshops or work with students or or anything really I I always say you know this is psychology it's the study of human behavior acting is really the study of human behavior and I find that so interesting I think if I weren't an actor I would be a psychologist or uh, just an icon, yeah, or or like a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> you know, either one. Um, but because I just really do believe that um, we are investigating why we do what we do, and that is something that we all connect to. And you sit in the audience and you go, "Oh, I I lost someone, and I'm grieving," and you can see that, and you have a cathartic mm-hmm. connection that you're, you know, between the audience and the storytellers. And you don't even know, but really, like we're all experiencing similar things, no matter who we are, or where we're from. Today is Women's Day on Broadway. Hey, Yay. power to so, the ladies. Let's talk about your T-shirt, which says "Power, Power, Power, Power." Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I I get really excited about designers that are are trying to raise awareness, and um, I'm working with a stylist who who really loves Alice and Olivia, and right now they're doing a campaign to help stop sex trafficking and human trafficking, um, and that's always been something that's been on my agenda and on my like and played of the million things of activism and things that you're like why is this happening in the world like why mm. do people do this to each other um but i was excited i i wanted to bring some like zest obviously you um, got it yeah thank you <laughs> um and also and and also i like to put my money where my mouth is like mm. i try to buy all products that are eco-friendly i try to live a life that i'm i'm lowering my carbon footprint as much as possible because we have to take care of each other we have to take care of our planet and your money Talks. It, the money is it, you know. Mm-hmm. So where you spend your money, you might be f- fueling and funding something that you would hate to know about. So it's good to kind of check that out. Well, I love how in alignment you are with your values, but I need to talk to you about something. Uh oh, a little bit sillier. All right, tell me about a- <laughs> tell me about AJ. Oh, are AJ, you all ready? are you ready for this? You're okay. Not ready. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see. <laughs> um, but he is my new puppy. Yeah. He's, <laughs> He's the cutest puppy I've ever seen. You guys. Okay, I took him to work. I took him to Hamilton on Sunday. All right, well, tell, all right go back. When? How did you decide you were going to get one? Where did you get him from? And this name and the whole... Tell okay, us the story. Okay, so what happened was, I, for, for about a year I've been wanting a dog. But living in LA and then bouncing back and forth and like kind of being like, where am I going to be? I wasn't... I just wanted to have like a stable situation. I was mm-hmm. like, I want to be like in one place. If you're going to have a dog, like you kind of... Especially for the first year... 
I think that they need like strict, strict rules. I'm learning this. I have no <laughs> rules, so we're we're learning together, AJ and I. Um, so I was, uh, you know, I'm I'm really an insomniac. So basically, what I was doing every night after the show, you know, get out at 11, and then I'm like googling until about four o'clock in the morning, like oh, no. where to find a puppy, like avoid puppy mills. How to yeah. avoid puppy mills? You know, all this mm-hmm. stuff. And I was just going crazy. And then I found this website. Um, greenfieldpuppies.com and I was like oh this looks nice and they all had they were all like these little puppies like little bow ties and like a bird's nest I don't know why they do that like why do they have it works that's that's yeah it, it works. totally <laughs> works I yeah. obviously bought one um so they uh you know I'm I'm looking and I'm scrolling and I see this this puppy and I'm allergic to everything so mm-hmm. I was looking at uh cavapoos which are cavalier and a poodle mm-hmm. and so cute um <laughs> and so I was just like and I didn't want to obviously like they're like three thousand dollars at city pups or something and right. you just don't know where they're coming from and so this place seemed really well vetted and so I was like okay I'll call this call this number so I called the breeder and they were really 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 nice and I was like okay great I will come in and um and pick one but I had already seen AJ, and his name was AJ, mm. A-J-A-Y oh, okay. already. And I was like, AJ is kind of my guy, but let, <laughs> let me go see. You had already fallen in love. With I had him. already <laughs> totally fallen in love. But then, so I get the address and last Monday, and I take my old dresser, who's now my best friend. She's a dresser at Westside. Shout out to Tracy Diebold. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so she came with me, and we road tripped to Pennsylvania. We're driving, we're driving, and we're like, where are we? <laughs> And there's just nothing but farms. And I was like, okay, he's from a farm. And mm-hmm. then I see like horse and buggies. And then oh, I was wow. like, oh, oh no, I, we're in Amish country. So <laughs> like, we drove up to an Amish farm and this um, really lovely 16 year old girl was like, here, this is AJ and this is Asher. These are the two we have left. And um, I was like, wow, I'm really on an Amish farm. And she said, where are you guys from? And I said, Manhattan. She goes, where's that? And what? I was like, oh my God. Oh. And I was like, AJ. Get in She's my the only person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna <laughs> rescue. Out. <laughs> Puppy rescue. Yeah, oh. but it was I, so it was a, a beautiful farm. They were super lovely, and we got out of there very fast. You met the only person in the universe who doesn't know all the lyrics to Hamilton. Yeah, she I, she was like, "What's a Hamilton?" I mean, there was a whole. She asked me where New York was. It was a. It was very oh. very interesting. I learned a lot that day. AJ now has a very big different life. Yeah, very different life. <laughs> very different. Like, and he's adjusting. Like a superstar, but I think he's he's turned into a diva already. He's well, a complete diva, I mean, and he acted. No, he's I, a Broadway dog. Now. I took him to work. <laughs> Everyone wanted to meet him, so I was like, I'm gonna bring him. And ev- everybody has dogs in the show. When Ryan Vasquez has like a gorgeous dog that he's nonstop posting about, like nonstop. Um, they're in dogs. a very committed relationship. <laughs> um, so, like, I was like, okay, I want to, I really want a puppy, and I want to bring him, and I want everyone wanted to meet him. And he came in, and he was perfect. He had his little Burberry scarf on. Yes. <laughs> he was perfect. And then I get home, and he was a terrorist. I mean, he was yeah, running around. See. He was. I mean, he's he's in a teething phase. He's biting ankles. He uh, once you've had a taste of backstage, I know <laughs> all the he attention. Was like, I mean, he's the stu- superstar of my life, but. Yeah, so AJ's great. We're both learning. <laughs> we are both learning. And uh, yeah, but he's like the light of my life. And I, I love animals. I'm, I'm vegan. I love pets. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to, to go on this puppy journey. But it is work. <laughs> Get a rescue that's like one or two or nine years old <laughs> and knows how to not poop in your house. This is some this is some serious advice. Serious that you should be I'm gonna have a hunchback. I just walk around the house like this all day now. Like I never stand up straight. It is incredible. Oh Your life goodness. has changed yeah, a lot. And I have a child. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know you all have questions because we have a Hamilton star here. Yay! So Caitlin, what are the people online asking? Yeah, all right. So the first question, Corinna on Facebook wants to know if you did any research on Eliza before stepping into the role and how did you kind of step into playing a historical figure? Ooh, yeah. Okay. One of my favorite things is research. Mm-hmm. Um, I love researching and because there is, I mean, there's now, there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, of course, more of it's going to be focused on Hamilton, but Eliza is the one that kind of cultivated and and made sure that he had a legacy. Um, so I got the books, and I also got his writings and the letters that he wrote to her, mm. and I could just see the pouring of love. I was like, man, why don't we write like this to each other? <laughs> like, I mean, it was just so vulnerable and because gooey. Because we, like, text. Yeah, yeah no, we text, it. like, 
what's up? Yeah. You know, like we don't text like, I long to touch you and hold you and, and caress you next to my bosom. Like, no. like nobody says that. And that's like, not a text I've ever gotten. Um, but yeah, so uh, I had five weeks of rehearsal. And before that, once I knew that I had the job, I was like, okay, I got to I gotta learn as much as I can. And as I have already played a real person, I played Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Mm -hmm. So I, a little bit different. Yeah, you try to find as much as you can. And um, in the book, Hamilton, that Ron Chernow wrote, like obviously gives a lot of information there. So I started reading that and then um, in the writings together. Those were like mm -hmm. the two things that they were like, we suggest you do these and like mm. start there. Um, but then also just, when I, you know, if you even just listen to the last song of the show and how she talks about all of the things that she did, and I always thought, like, a woman in the 1800s who has had her husband die basically in disgrace mm -hmm. um, and has raised funds for all of these organizations, has kept a legacy going, forced her cousin to write a biography that, you know, was, she didn't think it was great, but she was like, I need people to see what he did. I need mm -hmm. to have somewhere that everyone can see all of the amazing things that he did. For That she was an abolitionist, that she spoke out, that she continued to you know, push his agenda the best way that she could, mm -hmm. still having like eight other children to right. take care of. Um, and you know, I'll never be the exact replica of you know, Elizabeth Hamilton, <laughs> but the idea is the essence of that strength that power and that but what really she is is like all-encompassing love and leading like starting there I was like I'm gonna start with a person who is so in love with this man and the family that they've created that that's going to be step one and that's where I'm gonna start and then everything else starts to kind of fall into place and you know when the heartbreak happens mm -hmm. and all of that but then forgiveness it takes a, a large amount of, of of love and the fact that she spent the rest of her life dedicated to continuing his legacy and then also then to you know the biggest love letter to him is creating the orphanage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is just like what like who what kind of a human being can do that like what kind of love um, makes you do those types of things so when I started to you know dig in a little bit and about her family and upbringing and that she was more of backseat she was more reserved but she also was a strong spine. She was also a strong mm -hmm. caretaker and a person yeah. that she that could like really care for you. So I think that, I think that having those elements, reading the books, you know, it helped to put it all together. And then just thinking of the essence of a woman with that kind of strength mm -hmm. were my stepping stones to start the journey of creating this character for me. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. All right. So Jack on Twitter wants to hey, know Jack. <laughs> wants to know what is it like to be singing these words and being a part of this show? And what do you remember the most about your first night? Ooh, what do I remember my first night? Jeez, I was probably blacked out. Um, <laughs> the, uh, what did I, singing these words? Every word is so precious. You know, um, every word really matters, and everything that there's not. I always go, okay, this show is two hours and 53 minutes. What could have gone? Nothing. Like, I'm like, <laughs> what could, how could we have made this show two hours and 30 minutes? <laughs> like, nothing, nothing. Mm. And so it's so powerful, you know, and it zips by. And you want people to really understand and grasp it. You want people to get the factual information, but you also want them to get the human connection. Mm -hmm. the, you know, it's so many words coming at you very fast. So, yes, there is that. But saying the things like, who lives, who dies, who tells your story – you know, and, you know, when my time is up, have I done enough? These are questions that we all ask ourselves. Like, right. how lucky we are to be alive right now. That's probably my, my most favorite sentence because there are so many times where I think we all kind of take that for granted. Mm -hmm. We're like, I don't do this anymore. I don't do this. Or I don't want to pick so up this agent yeah. poop. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't want, I definitely don't want to pick up any more poop. But, <laughs> how you know, but lucky. there are days, you know, we, we forget how lucky we are to yeah. be alive, especially in this moment now, you yeah. know. And so that I think that those are those are things that for me stick with me and, and words that I think really matter. Um, but everything really matters in the show. The other thing, what I remember about my first night was um, crying through the finale, and I tried not to. And <laughs> I was just it was so overwhelming the emotion. And and then I'm looking at the I can see the audience very very well at this point. And they're crying, and I'm crying, and then we're, I, I barely get the sentences out. And, and I'm, one is, like, I'm proud. I'm excited that I got through it because I was like, this is a mammoth, like, of a production, and you just kind of jump in. 
And then the other part was like, just love. You know, mm -hmm. I was just like, and I was connecting with these people. And I was like, I get to sing this. I get to connect with people like this every single night. I get to say this. I get to look in these people's eyes and sing to them and, and have them connect with me. And I, I just felt so lucky. Mm -hmm. And I felt so like human in that moment, mm -hmm. which is why it was so vulnerable. But it was also just like such a touching moment. And I had some friends in the audience and it was just like a beautiful thing. I mean, I don't remember anything else. <laughs> Let's be real. I was like, get through it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have time for one more okay. quick yes. question. All right, we'll do one last quick question. Yes. And Lucy on Facebook wants to know if you could do another musical about mm. another historical figure, mm. who would it be? Mm. Oh, man. You're so in hand oh, right now. You know what? I think, okay, if they did it like like um, how they do a lot of the, like where there's three versions right. of yes. a character, okay. Yes. I think it would be cool to do like Oprah. <gasps> oh. Right? We need an Oprah musical. Ooh. And then we could throw a little, little like all of her like shows. We do a little color purple moment. Yes. Like, I mean, but you know, like Oprah <laughs> is like, she is the icon. And then like that level of success, like who's done that? And especially mm -hmm. a black woman. Um, yeah, it, black women that, you know, really have defined our culture, have really defined uh, and defied. Do you want to cast the other roles? Oh God! <laughs> I mean, I really put you. I mean, Audra. Well, Audra. I mean, Lashans would be great too. Love Lashans. Um, gosh, I don't know. Like, I'm I'll sure that Lashans would watch it. She's like gonna call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's but, a great idea. Love yeah. it. So the Oprah musical, 2025. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna wait a little bit. That's a perfect way to end our Women's Day on Broadway. Yeah. Live at five. Thank you, Crystal. Thank Joy you, guys. Brown. Thank you so much. Come see our show. Oh, yes. we will. Yes, yes we will. <laughs> Caitlin, will you take us on out, please? Gladly, yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day here on Facebook, and you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Patrick O'Mahony and Anna Mae Fitzpatrick, who are in the 25th anniversary company of Riverdance. <laughs>